So, hey, hi. Have you ever thought, you ever sat there and thought to yourself, why do we always use fans? There's just fans, fans, fans. There's always fans. We always use fans to cool our PCs. Uh, I've even made a fan or two, and they exploded them, and it was fun. But why? Why use fans? And, and many of you are probably like, because they work. But, uh, but what about that? Why can't we use something else? I have five horsepower of suction power that says, let's try something else. So this video is gonna be kind of two parts, one part channel update, one part let's make something ridiculous. Uh, so the first, let's go to the ridiculous part. So this is a shot back. It says five horsepower peak performance of sucking greatness. And what I want to do here, so I'm currently running a stress test of my i7 7700K at 49 gigahertz uh, with a 240 AIO. Just running 45 minutes to see how hot it gets. But after that, I want to try to take out all the fans, or at least unhook the ones like, well, the back one's going to come out. Uh, I'm going to take the rad fans off, take the 200 millimeter fans in the front off, and the top fans just going to unplug them. And we're going to try to just cool the radiator by evacuating all the air from the case with this shot back. Uh, to do that, we're going to have to make a bracket to go on the back here that we can mount the hose to, and we'll probably have to seal up all the rest of the all the holes in the case so we make sure the air is coming in the front through the radiator and out the back and we're going to see how that performs noise might be an issue noise will be an issue but anyway that's not the part the point the point is let's have some fun try to make something ridiculous and uh tell you why it's been so long before i printed anything first thing we got to do though is not mess this up we got to make a bracket for this back piece or the exhaust port um so come on over i'll show you how it's done so the first thing we're going to do here is understand the size of our opening. So it's made for 120 millimeter fans. So it's going to be 105 by 105. I just know that for how many times I've done this for, but we want to know this opening size. We're going to sketch it. So that's about 94. And what's it down here? 118. So we'll just go with, we'll go with 94 because that's kind of where our holes are going to be. Actually, we'll do 90.5. So I'll sketch that on my drawing here. And let's see how long we got to go. Right about one, could probably get away with 145. We also have to get our tube size because we got to connect this to that exhaust port. So it's pretty simple here. We'll look at the diameter. Starts out at 43, gets a little bigger, but I think if we go about 45, we'll get a nice fit. So now that we got our little sketch here of our rough dimensions and the size of our adapter, we're gonna jump in our design software and make something hopefully, well, it's useful is a strong word because it's not really useful. Um, it is gonna accomplish a task, be it a dumb one, but we're gonna do it anyway. So let's hop in here. We're going to go to a new part. Is our finished design. We have uh, essentially a fancy vacuum nozzle. We are going to Winner. 
put this on the exhaust port. So that's our 45, or that's our 120 millimeter fan, basically size. We're gonna screw it on to the backside with normal fan screws. Uh, we'll seal this up with some sort of gasket type material, plug our hose in there, and evacuate all the air from the case. And then hopefully if we seal it up good enough, we'll be pulling air through the radiator at a higher velocity or higher pressure or speed, whatever you want to use, than the fans do, and maybe we'll get better temperatures. One way to find out, now we gotta print this, which this which might take a minute. So let's let's throw it in a Cura and find out what it says it's gonna take and then it'll actually take way longer. So I use Cura. I don't know what you guys use, but I think it works good for me. But anyway, let's drag this dealio in here and see what it says. Actually it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna do three millimeter layer height. There's no sense in making it too crazy. Infill. I don't know if we can get away from 5%. We're gonna try it. And hopefully I can do no support. Well, I need support, but no build plate adhesion. So we'll see how it does here. What's it saying? Slice it up. It's saying three hours, which is actually not too bad given what we normally do here. So it's, it's gonna be iffy. I don't know. I'll have to wait and see. It's only a 5% infill. Should be all right. It's not actually showing any support, which is strange. I mean, it's, I guess it's not thinking it needs it. Well, I guess we'll find out one way or another. So let's, let's, let's give it a shot. If it says it can do it, let's see if it can do it. So now we are in the basement. It's been a minute since we've been down here in a video, but as you can see, things look different. I've started to work on finishing the basement. Me and my dad have been working on it. Uh, we worked on it last weekend. We worked on it the weekend before that. And then obviously because of some things in the world, we cannot work on it this weekend. So I decided it would be a good time to do it. Maybe a channel update, get the printer back out, make something goofy for you guys. And kind of explain why it's been so slow in the three printed world, but we're back. We're not leaving. Actually, when this is all done, this is where I'm going to move my studio down to. So we have plenty more space for activities. It's going to be great. It's a lot of work. I'm kind of excited. I'm not working on this weekend, but I can't wait for it to be done. But anyway, let's get the printer going and see how long this actually takes to print. Here you go, hot off the printer. I, I did have a couple issues. The first print came unattached from the build bed or the, the, build, the build bed. So that was an issue. Second one worked out just fine. I did add some clear packing tape to the whole outside surface of it because I printed the walls pretty thin. Uh, and the infill real light, so I want to make sure it was airtight. I also added a nice, well, I don't know if it's nice. I added a, a seal using double-sided tape with the backing still on around the edge to give us a better better seal around the case. I might have to add some tape on the edge as well because it's not the flattest bottom because my printer is just not that high of quality. But it turned out halfway decent. Uh, we probably make sure it fits the hose or... Yeah, this won't work at all. Okay, we're good. So this fits on our shot vac hose or our heat extraction device. And this is gonna go like so, and hopefully we're going to profit. But first I got to, gotta take off the back fan. I gotta take off the radiator fans and I gotta take off the 200 millimeter intake fans and probably seal up the case a little better so we make sure we're pulling air through the radiator like we want to. And then we'll see how it works. So let's, let's do that. So since I've essentially ruined this case, I think it's best if I, you know, test it in its horrible airflow configuration with just a fan. I do have the Noctua fan on its own power supply. As you see, only the IO, AIO pump is operational. And that's how we're gonna run it. And then we can compare that as well to a uh, shot back 9000. So uh, I got a Noctua fan mounted on the backside, kind of like we're gonna do with the uh, vacuum. <laughs> and um, we're gonna run the test for, well, plan 45 minutes and we'll Stop it early if uh, we're just hitting the wall. So let me put this front cover back on and uh, we'll see how that works. Bear right back. 45 minutes later and I will say that I'm kind of surprised. The one fan, the A12X25 that I have on there from Noctua. So let's just talk about the numbers thus far. Normally how it was set up 
day to day in a normal configuration we had an average temperature 82 room temperature 24 and a max of 90. like this with the case sealed except for one a12 x25 on the back as exhaust so i saw an average of only 84.4 room now is 23.7 and a max of 95 and i was expecting a little worse than that so that's pretty impressive and then i can i can actually feel i can feel the air being sucked in so this little fan's doing actually quite a bit more work than i thought so now it's time to hook up this thing and run the vacuum for 45 minutes. I'm gonna have to deal with that sound and see how it turns out. So, <laughs> we're good to go. We got that attached and sealed, the doors resealed. Uh, right, it's currently just been running with, with no fans, so we're slowly building up our temperature. So, vacuum cleaner's got everything stacked against it, but we'll see what happens. All right. Uh oh. Can't even see it. Here's the old. Heat sucker 9000. Noise level a little higher. You can definitely feel some suction if you can even hear me. I think we'll let it run for a little bit. Well, at least I made it. So what'd we learn? Well, we learned that that's loud and probably the reason you don't see it more often. And two, we learned that temperatures aren't really that bad. So like we spoke before, uh, normal configuration, 82 degrees Celsius average temperature with just the one A12 X25 fan, we're looking at 84.4 for the average temperature. And with the shot back, we got a 78.9 degrees Celsius for the average temperature. Room temperature is staying around 23.8 and then a max of 90 as well. So yes, it works. And I also had to put all this back together because I've ruined this PC with more tape than anyone could ever imagine. Um, so anyway, what, what did we learn? We learned that this works. Now, how ridiculous of an idea is this? Well, on the surface, if you're gonna use a shot vac, pretty ridiculous because it's really loud and annoying, but there is a way that this could work and not drive you insane. And I'll have to go show you something in my house that maybe a lot of you have never seen before because I didn't even know it was a thing until I moved in here. Uh, so let's go out there. So this right here is a central vac. And if you haven't heard one of those, you're probably not alone because I had no idea it was a thing. But essentially I have a, a nozzle here or a plug here and then it, downstairs in the kitchen, I also have one and they all go down into the basement. So we're back in the basement and it's, the lighting's not the greatest, but if we look right above our heads, there's a tube that sticks out of the floor. And essentially what that would do is if it was hooked up, that tube would run basically over into where all the mechanical stuff of my basement is. And you'd have essentially a shot vac in the basement. And then when you want to run the vacuum, you would plug into one of those nozzles. You'd turn the central vac in, it would run in the basement and you could just vacuum, which is a suction. Now, if you were to use that in the same respects that I did upstairs with the shut vac, you could essentially pull all the heat from your PC, not heat up the room you're in, and you would not have to listen to the vacuum because it'd be way down in the basement. So essentially, you could almost have a silent operation other than the, the sound of air being sucked out of your case. And you could probably still hear a hum in the basement depending on how big your house is. But if I actually had my central vac, which I don't, and it was actually hooked up rather than just the tubing going through the walls, we could do what I just did and have good temperatures and silent operations and benefit the room wouldn't heat up and that room upstairs that I'm in heats up 
quite a lot given how small it is with all the PCs in it. So yes, it was a project done just because it's funny, but in the end, if I had the proper equipment in my basement, it would actually be useful. So thank you guys for watching. As if always, if you have a nifty or strange project you wanna see me do, leave me a comment down below. And uh, hopefully eventually we'll have this basement done and we'll be down here. Till next time.